we know that the BMR formulas are, I would say, good but not great. Like they, they do as good of a job as I think you could reasonably expect them to do. So depending on the formula in question and the population being studied, the typical error of these formulas is anywhere between like maybe 150 calories and like 400 calories, but you know, mostly in like the 200 calorie per day range. So if, uh, if, if something tells you that your BMR is 1600 calories per day, you can kind of tack like a 200 plus or minus error range on that. And you know, it, it's probably, what did I say? 1800, 1600? I think I said 16. I think um, so. Whatever. So if it says 1600, your BMR is probably somewhere between 1400 and 1800. Individual errors can certainly be larger than that, but in, in all probability, it's within that 400 calorie range, 200 plus or minus, uh, which, you know, could be more precise, but given the estim the, the information being plugged into that calculator, um, you know, that's, I, I feel like that's about as good as you could reasonably hope for it to do. Uh, but then the the next step of that process, going from a BMR estimate to a TDEE estimate, is uh, th that's more of a crapshoot. So basically, there there are uh, various sets of activity multipliers that you can use, but by far the most common one I see is 1.2 if you're sedentary, 1.375 if you're lightly active, 1.55 if you're moderately active, 1.725 if you're very active, and 1.9 if you are extremely active. Like th those are the, the qualitative uh, categories, sedentary through extremely active. And uh, those, those numbers I gave is what you would multiply your BMR by to estimate your total daily energy expenditure. Uh, and so you immediately run into one problem, which is just how do you classify yourself? Uh, and so the, the descriptions for these aren't very helpful. Like they tend to not disambiguate lifestyle versus like dedicated exercise. So for example, the description for sedentary is inactive job and very rare or minimal exercise. And so, you know, what if you have an inactive job, but you exercise five days a week? Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's hard to say or extremely active, uh, hard daily exercise, and other regular physically demanding tasks. So what if you do hard daily exercise but have a sedentary job? You know, so it, it's it's hard to know which of these categories you're supposed to fall in. And even beyond that, uh, this, is, this is, I think, more subtle. But even if everyone did perfectly know which one of those categories they fell into, uh, simply by, by multiplying by kind of bucketed activity factors, you still increase the estimation error for total daily energy expenditure calculations. So, you know, let's say that you, um, you know, let's say your total daily energy expenditure is 1.45 times your basal metabolic rate. So you would fall in between lightly active and moderately active. And if you choose either of those two multipliers, that's going to generate uh, somewhere around 5% additional error just because those activity factors are bucketed. Uh, and so with all of that information, um, I was very curious like what the relative accuracy of these TDE calculators actually were. And like I said, I couldn't find any research on that, but we we know enough that we can we can model it uh, pretty well. So that's what I did in this article, and that at least for me personally was the part that I found most interesting and the part that I liked writing about the most. Um, so you can you can check out the article to see my methodology, uh, and also I, I linked a spreadsheet that you can use to tinker with my assumptions if you want to generate uh, different estimates. Uh, but I, I you know tried to generate the most. Uh, the most justifiable set of assumptions that I could uh, in order to attempt to quantitatively uh, address this question. And uh, so I, I was interested in basically how often does this process generate a total daily energy expenditure estimate that is close enough to your actual total daily energy expenditure that from the jump, uh, calorie targets that you generate using this approach will get you 
pretty close to the desired rate of weight gain or weight loss you want. And uh, basically what I found is that it works about half the time. Um, so for about, for a little less than 50% of people, the total error generated by this approach is less than 250 calories per day. So, you know, if you're uh, actually burning 3000 calories per day, uh, you know, maybe a calculator will say 3250, maybe it'll say 2750, but that's in the right general ballpark. If you're trying to lose a pound a week, you'll end up losing half a pound to a pound and a half per week, like doing a pretty good job. Uh, but for the other approximately half of people, it's it's generating relatively inappropriate calorie targets, uh, which can, for a very small minority of people, be, be in excess of a thousand calories per day, which could mean if you're trying to lose a pound per week, you're actually gaining a pound per week, which or losing three pounds per week and in a huge deficit. Um, the The most common kind of category of error was between 250 and 500 calories per day, uh, which would essentially mean that if you were trying to lose a pound a week, you would be losing close to two pounds per week or losing weight at a essentially glacial pace. Like that, that was about a third of people have errors on that magnitude. So essentially this process is it does a decent job of getting you in the right general ballpark to start with, um, but you'll you'll definitely need to uh, make adjustments, probably from the jump for most people, and certainly over time as metabolic adaptation kicks in. Um, and so then at the end, full disclosure, there is a little macro factor pitch. Uh, you know, essentially, once you have all of that information. You can make adjustments yourself, you know, based on your your rate of progress, whether or not you're plateauing, or you can use a software that that will do all of that for you.